Hello friends, good day to you. Today I'm making a demonstration about the use of TCP dump to analyze your network traffic. TCP dump is a command line utility that can capture all the packets that flow in or out of a of an interface on a Linux system. Uh, this uh, command line utility can be very important, especially when you need to resolve issues or when you have some issues, some issues you might only be able to resolve them by gaining insight into the uh, protocols and the traffic that flow on your interface. Another reason why this command may be important is if you, if you just want to store the network traffic. Another reason is maybe you want to store the uh, pro network protocols. Maybe you are a student and uh, you, you just learned about HTTP. You want to know what are the messages that actually flow or in or out or when you will use HTTP. So this, these are all the reasons these are all the reasons uh, why you want to use uh, this particular command. So let's go to the terminal where I will show you what we can do with this command. So I am on a CentOS 7.3. So let me show that to you. Uh, TCP dump is available on most Linux uh, distributions. Uh, if you don't find it on your system, you can install it with your default or uh, packet manager. So let's look at the man page first. Uh, man page of TCP dump. So, like I said, it is a uh, it dumps traffic on a network. And ordinarily, let's run TCP dump. So if I run TCP on my on this server, you see it just it just keep on capturing all the packets that come in or go out of on my system. But this is not the best way to use this command. Uh, so like with every most utilities in Linux, the best use comes with the options. So let's look at the help. So we have a lot of options that we can use with this command. So uh, these options, I'll be demonstrating a couple of them well, to you. So the first one that I will demonstrate to you is uh, TCP dump dash D, capital or uh, uppercase D. What this shows is uh, it, it tells us all the interfaces that we can capture packets on. These are all the interfaces that TCP don't can capture packets on. But you might not want to capture a packet on all these interfaces because some of them, you know, for example, this uh, this is Net Linux Nerfita. You might not be interest, interested in capturing on all your interfaces. So that is why we have another uh, option dash i dash i tcp dump dash i dash i to specify the particular interface that I want to capture the packet on so i will specify my so uh, before i run that command let me just show you on my system i have i have uh, one loopback interface i have it is zero and it is one so basically i have two ethernet uh, interfaces so let us run tcp dump on my it is zero so again it just uh dumps a lot of information on me which my i mean i might want to do this or i may not want to do this but a, a good way or uh, to use it let's say i i want to dump uh all packet in in a certain um time frame maybe i just want to capture the packet that goes on in my on on this network but 
it will be good if I can write it some way. You know, it will, it will be good if I can store this uh, output somewhere so that I can review it later. And that is why I will introduce the dash W. The dash W is for, you know, writing out. So basically that's what it stands for. So I can say dash W and uh, I can say capture. Let's just say capture dot pickup. So dot pickup is usually the extension that is used for packet capture. So I can say TCP dump dash I, the interface dash W to write it to all this file. So let me press enter. So the capturing is going on. So like you see here, it's a capture size. So th this is, that is the size of what has been captured. So the this the if my if my server is a high traffic server, this uh size of file will go we in we uh, blow up very fast. So I I will type Control C to stop. So basically, it told me, okay, uh, it captured. Okay, I, I couldn't see the output. So basically it said packet received by filter is this so let, let's look at this file basically so let's try to look at this file with uh, less so but it told me this file is a binary file uh, do you want to see it okay let's see it you see oh uh, this is basically not uh, meaningful because it is a binary file and uh, we can view it as a text file so how can we view this packet, packet capture file one way that you can view this file is to send it to a tool like wireshark or t shark so there, there's another utility is t shark t shark is a command line version of wireshark so i can read my packet capture that i have by sending it to T shark so you see with t shark i'm able to read this file so basically uh it told me the it, it told me that the packet that was captured the first packet was ssh going from 192.168.1.8 to 10.0.0.150 so that, that is one way so let's produce or uh, proceed with our uh option study so another option that i will introduce to you is a dash c c for count so basically what this does is rather than capturing a whole lot of packages let's say i want to capture the first 10 package or uh, packets sorry i said packages <laughs> i mean packet packet tcp dump dash i it is zero that c 10 so it's going to capture the first 10 packets uh, apologies so you see oh uh, it's captured 10 packets and it exited so uh, you see uh so let, let's let, let's capture one packet so that i can uh explain to you the fields that are in these packets I'm just gonna capture only one packet. So I captured only one packet. You see, it started from here. So the first field that you see here is uh, the timestamp. So the timestamp is the first field that you see here. The next field is the type of packet. This is IP packet. IP essentially means IPv4, IP version 4. And it told us this the packet is coming for is going from server one dot nova local then you see dots dots then this the, the name of the service ssh so that's the name of the service going the, you see the arrow going to 10.0.0.150 on port 59.816 next you see the flags so this this part is a tcp part so the tcp 
flags or this the sequence number acknowledgement the window size then the tcp options so that is uh one packet that we can capture so uh, we so this time or uh, the timestamp that we see here we can view it in different ways with the help of another option i'm introducing another option dash t so the numbers of t's you, you can look at the man pages for this but depending on what format you want so let's use dash ttt so basically you see how the packet uh, the timestamp came up this time around uh let's include one t it's going to change the timestamp again you see now it, it, it told us the date 2017-01-23 the time then the the time or uh, the time that elapsed you know to capture this packet so that is for the timestamp so the i have introduced a couple of options dash i dash i is very important most times you are you are going to run tcp dump with dash i because you need to specify a particular interface you want to capture on dash c the, no, the number the count of packets that you want to capture then dash ttt is for the to uh the timestamp so but let's see what else we can do we can actually capture different kind of traffic let's say i want to capture dash i okay i'm going to generate some traffic on this server actually then i will show you or uh, then we can see more of what is done so i will say tcp dot dash i and i will capture five packets and what i'm going to do i'm going to ping i'm going to ping this server this is my server one i'm going to ping that server from my server two so i'm going to do ping 192.168.1.8 okay uh it's now capturing let's see what's going on here oh sorry i never pressed enter i wrote the command but i never pressed enter so uh okay okay let, let, let's do that experiment again <laughs> so oh uh, let, let me quickly actually introduce something to you i can capture a specific type of uh, traffic i can capture you know what if i do or if i run this a lot of traffic is going on but let's say i am interested only in icmp traffic i want to capture only icmp you see i'm running the command but nothing is being captured because there's no icmp traffic going on i can generate some icmp traffic by pinging my server one doing this so you see let me stop the ping so it has captured a couple of packets for us so like i said the first field is the timestamp the next is the ip it says this is the type of packet is ip this is the source you see this is the source of the traffic 192.168.1.11 that is my server 2 the destination is server one dot nova local the uh, the uh, the after the ip layer the next layer is icmp so it's telling me this is an icmp or uh, echo request so if you are familiar with icmp uh, it's it sends echo request and i an echo reply are the messages so you can see the echo request and the echo rec echo reply so i am able to capture a specific kind of traffic so let, let's uh, look at another option that we can look at so another option that i will introduce is 
verbose option. So if I want this capture to be more verbose, I will use the dash V. So the, if I want it to, it to be, depending on how the, no, the level of verbosity that I want, will determine the how many Vs that I will use. So let's say I use one V and I, I want to capture traffic of type ICMP. So let's run our ping again. So now you can see it has more, it has a little bit more information for us than what we had earlier. So now we can see the timestamp again, IP, and we can look at, it gives us information into the IP packet itself. So it tells us this, the type of service, the time to leave, 64, the ID, the offset or flags that this with our fragmentation or this is a fragmentation flag then the proto it tells all the proto which is icmp and the length of the packet which is 84 uh, then we see the source of the traffic the destination icmp echo request or uh, id sequence length, sequence number and the length you see we got more information because we use the verbals flag let's add uh, uh v's so now we have three v's so that means we increased the verbosity we are going to get more information about our traffic let's do it again or uh, let's run the ping again so let's stop the ping so let's see if we got more information um actually i think Maybe that's, I think the information here is the same as before, but so maybe that's how much information you can get on this particular uh, ICMP packet. So let's move a little further and let's uh, look at uh, on, my, on my system server one. Actually, I have a uh, and HTTP, I have a web server, Apache web server running. So if I call, do a call on localhost. So it says this is server one. So now let's capture HTTP traffic rather than capturing ICMP. So I'm saying now I want traffic so i can i can specify like something like port 80 or i can do source port 80 but i'm not gonna get anything if i do that Let, let's say uh destination port 80 so I, I want traffic that are going to destination of port 80 so let's run it so on my server 2, uh, instead of pinging, I will do a call. So you see, you see, this is server 1. So let's look at what we got. So we got a couple of packets. So the first one was uh, that came in was, or was this. And uh, we see now the type of traffic now is... Uh, TCP and HTTP. So I think we can actually use HTTP. Let's see. Oh, it was oh, syntax error. So HTTP is not uh, part of the service that we can use it. But like you, like we 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 see, we can use something like port eighty. Or what we can do? Let's do. Port 80. Let me reduce the verbos. Let me remove the verbosity. So we just want to see traffic that involves port 80. So uh, okay, I think I have to do uh, port 80. So yeah, port 80. I want to see traffic that involves port 80. So let me do the call again. So now we see the 
So this are all the messages that so for this uh to for this call to work these are all the messages that were exchanged so we see uh, the first message include uh, involves the the same packet the first one is actually the same packet the second one is uh, acknowledgement you know same hack then I think we, let, let's use uh, the verbosity so that we can see. Let's increase the verbosity so that we can see all these messages. So these are all the messages that were exchanged, you know, to serve that this web web page, so to say, you know, call using the call to you know from our server one. So we see. We see all the uh, TCP related traffic you know, and options, you know, things like the maximum segment size, selective acknowledgement, um, the, 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 I think, uh, okay, the, uh, this is the error, uh, congestion, okay, the, this is okay. Oh, I think I forgot what this stands for, but I forgot what ECR stands for. I used to know, but we see our uh, window scale is seven. So this are uh, basically all the TCP options that were involved, and uh, we see the checksum and uh, so. But let's say we want to actually see want to see we can actually look at this uh, HTTP or traffic by using it an option a for ASCII so we want to see the output you know in ASCII test let's do the call again so now we see uh, the, the the output in ASCII test and uh, we can if we look through we can see how the HTTP HTTP headers so if you are familiar with HTTP so like HTTP 1.1 or .1, uh, all the headers and uh, we can see the response this is server one and other HTTP related headers. So I think one one way one usual way that I that I know that that can help us to even read uh, to read these packets better. Like I introduced earlier was with T Shark. So we can write this output to a file. I'll call it picker. I'll run the call again. So you see, oh uh, yeah, I'm writing now. We don't see any output because I'm writing it to a file, and it told us uh, got ten. That means it got ten packets. So we are expecting to see ten packet packet. So I close it. So um, let's run T Shark now. T Shark. Oh, uh, let's see. So we see. We'll see a little bit more. So basically, with T Shark, we are able to see the the exact uh, it, TCP messages like same. Like I said, that is the first TCP message when TCP wants to open or uh, a socket, which is refers to as three way handshake. So we we'll same. Then we we'll see the same hack. Then we we'll see the Acknowledgement. After the acknowledgement, the we, we get the data. So you see HTTP get. So uh, uh, after getting, there's an hack. Then on the two hundred OK, there's an hack. So the uh these three packets here. Packet oh uh, actually four packets. Packet four, five, six, seven are. Uh, 
related to you know the actual getting of the date of the web page so to say so the last three packets are related to closing of the socket so you see we have fin or fin hack you know the the you know like opening a, a tcp socket we have to close the tcp socket also with uh the, in the in the same with the same uh set of um, i mean sequence of messages you know like there has to be a frame there and the acknowledgement the the client this the server also has to reply with a fin and acknowledgement and finally the client has to acknowledge uh receive you know recipe, receiving the fin hack before the socket can be closed so um this is a demonstration of how you can use uh tcp dump to study your your network protocols so let's see what other option we can introduce so again okay another option is dash uppercase s uppercase s is a you know when we run the, the this tcp dump on especially for this for tcp protocols we can use the uppercase s uppercase s allows us to see the absolute sequence number so we'll see you know rather than using a relative sequence number we actually see <coughs> the absolute sequence number so the first sequence number uh, is called uh in initial sequence number so from that we we'll see so the, we see the, the the size of this uh this sequence number is bigger so it, it helps us to see the absolute sequence number so um what else can i introduce can i show you uh i've shown you uh, most of the options that are common you know to use so i think one more thing i can show is uh filters basically <coughs> filters so for example like i showed you earlier you can fill you can use filter with the output so that you can get a cleaner output so filter refers to things like ports ad and we can use something like port 80 and port 22 so this would uh, capture both port 80 and port 22 so or uh, can you use something like tcp you know with the, you know with the tcp we just want to capture only or uh, <coughs> we want to capture only packet directly to tcp let's try something with udp let's say we want to capture packet with udp let's generate um a tcp uh, a udp packet so this is still my server one i just opened the terminal on a separate i just opened the same server on a separate terminal so i can run dig uh, okay i have the dig so you see i generated uh, uh udp traffic let's particularly look for uh, uh packet that i live to for port 53 so this will be dns so let me do something like dig i want to dig google.com so if you want to look at what uh, goes on with uh dns so this is uh, our dns messages the, you know, the dns messages that are exchanged so we'll see things like uh, um with this i mean again we'll see all the things that relate to the ip so you see here now it's a proto is udp and uh, we see something like a record that is trying to get the a record of google.com so 
uh, option who can UDP size yeah, is 1496 so basically if you want to study uh, what goes on when you do DNS so this is an example of it so um, I think uh, what one last thing that I would like to show you is uh, an option dash dash n option so basically let me run uh, t0.80 uh, so let me run the call again you see when we run this we get things like server local and dot http let's say we want to get the actual ip address and the actual uh, service we don't want it resolving their name so we can use it with dash n dash n so if we run the call again so rather than getting the the host name we get the ip address but we are still getting http here rather than getting port 80 we can fix that by or uh, adding one more n so dash n n so if we run this call again oh sorry uh, run the call again so we'll see now we see 192.160.1.8 then dot 80 so that is a way to make sure we see uh, the actual IP address rather than just the host name so um, with all the options that I've introduced to you um, you know if you combine all these options you will be able to do a lot of things uh, with this command uh, one thing that I may want to show you quickly let's say uh, we can use the filter with IP address so I want to see only traffic that originates you know from uh, let me show you that again I want to see traffic that originates only from this IP address so the filter is actually uh, very uh, very useful so I can combine it with let's say and port 80 so I want to see the one that has source IP address of this and that's port 80 so you see we are not seeing anything because you see because I added and port 80 so if I generate port 80 traffic again now we see very few um, we see only half half of our uh, HTTP traffic so we see only packets that originate from uh, 192 160 the 1.8 and port 80 so you see how we can combine um, the filters so it makes it a very powerful and like i showed you you can write to a file i think writing to a file is a very powerful thing when you write to a file if you cannot view if if it's you know viewing or uh, is difficult you have to transport the file to maybe a desktop that has a wireshark running or use the T shark. I, I have showed you. I showed you the use of T shark. Or oh, so if I search for the T shark, so I showed you the use of T shark to read the captured our uh, data. You see, so th those are ways by which you can. If you cannot use T shark on the command line, you can transport it to a desktop where. You can use a wire shark so uh, i think this is good enough for the video um if you want to learn more you can look at the man pages and try combinations of all these options that i've introduced to you and uh, i think you'll find it useful uh, i hope you uh, enjoyed the video i hope you learn one or two things thank you